Hi there, welcome back to ADSR FMA Tutorials. Make sure you get yourself subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. Continuing with the feature we've been doing this month, looking at the kind of cause and effect to the routing section in the FM matrix and um, just kind of delving into sound design and using this FM matrix to just create kind of nice sort of tones and, and kind of nice fat warm sounds. So I've got this bass sound here. I'm going to talk through quickly how I put it together and then we're going to have a look at this FM matrix and just how we can use the various parameters on offer in FM matrix, so, you know, frequency modulation and the routing and stuff uh, and exploring some of these ratios and, um, and the envelopes and just how it's all going to affect the sound and hopefully this is just going to develop your understanding of this FM matrix and the kind of how and why and, you know, like a lot of it is experimentational but some of it there is kind of some logic behind you know how to sort of root some of these operators to create those nice sounds so for this bass sound set up or kind of mid-rangey sort of bass uh, you can see the waveforms I've got here stacked six waveforms all the operators I'm not using a the filter they're just rooting straight to the output um, some different ratios so as we talked last week you know B is at a ratio of one uh, and then operator A is 0.125, so it's three octaves below B. C is 0.25, so two octaves below. And uh, yeah, just stack them up like this, really. Um, and then we've got these kind of waveforms, a mixture of smooth, you know, soft square signs and stuff, like kind of nice smooth waveforms. And then these kind of more brittle, kind of crunchy sort of format waveforms that are adding that kind of like, I guess crispness, sort of high frequency and mid range and stuff like that. Um, I've got some customized envelopes set up here on just a few of the operators, and we're kind of going to look at that shortly. And um, yeah, that's what's creating that kind of rhythmic effect to the sound. I've got the master section, two voices, a bit of panning going on. Uh, some digital bit crushing, monophonic sound. I've actually transposed the whole patch up by one octave, so just that when I hit a C3 note, I only have a small controller keyboard here with a couple of octaves, so hit a C3 note and it's kind of the nice sort of frequency range what I'm hitting there. And um, that's pretty much it really, some effects, some overdrive, distorting the sound, um, some shelving EQ on the lows and the highs and then some peaks in those areas as well just to fine tune that EQ a bit and some chorus just to kind of thicken the sound, warm it a little bit. So that's our sound set up. I mean, it might be useful to just kind of loop a C3 note in here whilst we're kind of playing around with this sound. So one thing we can look at here, what I've done with this patch, normalize the timbres. So in this kind of morph matrix, we can have our preserved patch over in the top left hand corner and that's going to stay unaffected. And then we can move to the top right and we can start experimenting. So you want to start playing around with some of this feedback, you'll hear the effect that all of this kind of rooting is having on the sound. So just left with those two operators and the sound is complete it's quite puny now it's quite thin and weak we just got like D and F so a soft square and a sine wave and as we were talking before last week about these format waves and how they can be quite good to modulate a sine wave look up here in the in the analyzer section bringing that kind of format feeding into the sign what's that's doing to the sound and that's actually feeding back into itself as well so have to be careful with that because obviously it just turns to kind of a horrible white noise if you go too high with it and then the same thing again what we've kind of stacked this 
this idea we've got here with a four month feeding into a kind of more complex waveform feeding into a smoother waveform actually kind of repeating this process here operator D is a soft square and I've got C is like a four formant and I think right okay that's not doing enough for it there change it to temp and I mean because of the way these these wave format waveforms are stacked up if you keep on going up from two to, to, to three to four, they tend to sort of create more high frequency content, especially when you're using them to modulate other operators. So So the other sound we have in here, operator B, is just a plain sign. And I brought that in and I think when I was designing this sound I thought I wanted to kind of lift it a little bit because it's all very low. So I brought in the operator B and it just brings a bit more kind of higher sort of high frequency content in there. But I thought maybe too much. So this operator A here could use that to control operator B a little bit and use B as a carrier and A as a modulator to modulate operator B. So turn off D and F for now. And we've just got this kind of quite plain simple sort of sine wave. Obviously it's got this envelope attached to it so really dirty up that that operator operator B there by using some kind of like <clears throat> by modulating it with operator A so if we go back to our sound top left and I wanted to show you something with the envelopes here and how We've got, it sounds quite nice, I mean it's very sort of crunchy this sound. You wouldn't want to kind of distort that or rough it up or do much more kind of frequency modulation with it because it would just turn into sort of white noise. But the importance of, or the control you can have with a sound like this with the envelopes. So at the moment we've got basically the carriers here at D and F. They've been modulated by various other operators here so operator A is modulating them both E is modulating F C is modulating D which is being modulated by B um, to just get this stacked kind of like sound but the two outputs are E and F and it's important that there for this sound they have this this kind of envelope tweaked here so let's go ahead and save this envelope in the empty slot there so we're then to sort of unsync operator D convert this to just a normal kind of wave we're getting kind of a sort of quite weird sort of thing going on with the sound with operator F it's kind of like nicely it's got a nice envelope on it whereas operator operator D which is one of the carriers just has sustain on it now so we just kind of get that mess of sound so I tend to with working with sounds like this and bypassing the filter and just using the amp kind of envelope to modulate the sound as it were and to create your own customized envelopes. The carriers tend to be one of the ones that you want to have the envelope applied to, if not all of them. But I mean, get that quite nice sound. If we sync all of these envelopes, make sure they're tempo synced as well. get a slightly different effect again it sounds even more gated than it was before where we had the sustain on the kind of modulator envelopes so unsync all of these
And with this sound here set up, I can actually just start playing around again and just show you how we can affect the sound even more. So one thing we could do is look at it and go, right, why don't we just have F as the carrier and just stack up all, all these other waveforms and route them all through F. start off with something nice and clean, just got a sine wave there, go for like a second form man, keep the ratio at 0.25 and let's just kind of modulate that operator F with operator E and just, I don't know, rough it up a little bit. Um, I mean we could go higher we start to get some nice tones but we're going to stack all these operators up so with that nice tone if we start then rooting D into E and C into D it's going to get too much so for this sound what I want to do is I'm just going to subtly modulate each operator like this in this kind of daisy chain uh, and then the effect of each of these subtle kind of modulations is going to kind of lead to just a, a kind of like quite a nice stat sound so Just adding a bit of tone there. Keep this as a soft square dot operator D. We could even try and go an octave down now, see how that sounds. Sounds quite nasty. So C now we're gonna root this into D. And with that being an octave above D, it's actually kind of lifting that, that tone. It got quite dark then, but they're lifting it up again and now a little bit. And once get a bit more brittle with things. And another cool feature, if you're kind of doing sound design in FMA, is the ability to scroll through waveforms. So. So I actually thought when we were scrolling through TX Wave 5 sounding quite nice. It's bringing quite a nice amount of kind of mid-range character into the sound. So operator B next. And then let's keep this thing going with a kind of smooth and more kind of complex waveform. So sine wave for operator B. bit too much kind of high end in there now. Take it down an octave. Another octave. And operator A. Let's go for something a little bit more complex again. Then we go to one of these. One plus seven wave. And then what we could do is feed all these operators back into themselves. And then what if we took the output of F, route it back into A, and then we're creating this crazy sort of feedback loop. So. the operator of F down one. Probably works a bit better as a bass sound and we've got this
And with a sound like this, everything's so stacked up that any slight kind of change you make on any of these operators is going to have a real knock-on effect to the sound because you're modulating the free using the frequency of this operator to modulate this operator to then modulate this operator and so on and then taking the output and rooting it back so it's coming back round again so the, the sounds kind of sort of modulating and then coming back round so And with something like that, I think, right, okay, the sound's quite nice now, but rather than using these operators in the FM matrix to bring in more kind of high frequency content, you can always just tweak that EQ. So what we've done there is we kind of sort of flipped the sound on its head and just played around with the tone. If I go back up to the top left corner, we could maybe actually do something here with the amount. Turn that down so the, the EQ and that and what were changes we made in the bottom left corner aren't quite as harsh. So So another thing we could look at here, if we go over to this bottom right hand corner and create another variation of this sound in here, and just pull the volume of these down slightly, what we could do is, we could treat operator A and B as completely separate things, so C, D, E and F, we've got this stat sound going on, you know C's rooting into D, E's rooting into F, D and F have got this kind of tempo seats envelope applied to them they're the carriers C and E are the modulators and operator B has this tempo synth envelope as well but rather than these operators A and B feeding into these sounds and affecting these sounds we can have them over here doing their separate thing and create a little bit of a chord going on here so if I put 125 on B Point seven five. Make it a sawtooth. Bring quite a nice element into the sound. Use operator A to kind of distort or modulate operator B. So point three seven five. So an octave below operator B, just splitting that ratio in half. could try a different chord in here as well for a bit of a different flavor go point point eight on B you know it's because this ratio is kind of not in sync with operator B it's actually sounding quite sort of nasty now so push this ratio up to point four like quite sort of I don't know almost like a suspense kind of chord going on so quite nice so yeah there's some more kind of sound design things really using this FM matrix the cause and effects and just the kind of routing really so quite helpful with FM8 and sound design in FM8 to sort of have a bit of an idea of these kind of waveforms and how just you know a bit of understanding of how they're going to affect the sound and uh, good interesting ways in which to use them and these ratio offsets and stuff so yeah I hope you found that tutorial useful 
Um, any questions, please get in touch, let us know. Make sure you get yourself over to the website, fm8tutorials.com. Tons more tutorials on FM8. And yeah, hope to see you again soon. All right, cheers, bye.